Well, <clears throat> welcome uh, back to Kane's Armory YouTube tutorials, and I just decided to take a moment out of my extremely busy schedule to show you something. So I've, I've uh, had a, a, a aluminum lamination, or metal lamination, uh, video up sitting on my YouTube for a while that hasn't been touched in quite some time because I, I haven't uh, gotten the chance to do another project. Well, I've got another project to do another aluminum laminate sword, and I've already done a lot of work on it. So, there it is, already done. So, you remember my last video, that was uh, a whole process of hammering. You can see the hammered edge right there. And uh, filing to get that shape. So, it's done already. So, you saw me do that with aluminum, but uh, there's another material that I like to work with. Oops, let's put it that camera. Let's uh, talk about brass. Here is a brass sheet that I have. It's pretty thick, to be honest with you. A lot thicker than that aluminum is, so it doesn't hammer very easily. So I can't shape it to the same amount of detail and curve. Now, if I got a thinner piece of brass, I sure the heck could. Um, I could also use a hammer um, on it and shape it into bowls if I wanted to, but I won't be able to retain the amount of detail that I want. So, shiny nose. So, um, what I'm doing is I'm cutting out uh, these shapes for the scabbard. Now, all of these are preformed or pre-measured uh, templates that I've cut out, so I have them all labeled with orientation. This is number four, and that's the up arrow, and I have a corresponding up arrow on um, on the scabbard. Here is its companion piece, number three, and I've already cut that one out. Now, I'm cutting them out, and I have two more pieces to cut out after this one, but I decided that since I've been spending a lot of time on the scroll saw, I might as well conclude uh, part two for the aluminum lamination, brass lamination. Now here's the piece, I'm, I'm cutting it out, but you can see where I've already cut it. And you'll notice a couple of things, let's not use the middle finger. Uh, number one, that's a large area right there. You may wonder, oh, that's kind of odd. Why do you have that? And on the other side, you'll notice that it is not over the white piece of paper, the white piece of paper being my border. That is so I could turn the blade. Now, I'm going to turn this camera around, and I'm going to start some showing you some things on the uh, scroll saw. All right. Once upon a time, I made a post about this on Tumblr, uh, but we're going to make a video of this. Uh, in some detail. This post had to do with making the exact same scabbard, uh, and I would talk about some of the details on here, starting with this. This is your tensioner knob. Um, this is a very important piece. Now, I'm going to turn the uh, uh, scroll saw on, and I want you to watch that tension knob. Now, notice it goes up and down because it is attached directly to the armature that goes all the way over here onto the actual blade tensioner. Now, I'm going to undo just a little bit. I'm going to take this blade off. This type of blade is a pin blade, 5 inch. And you can see here where it is deeply colored in brass. So that's not coming off. Go ahead and focus, focus, focus. That is the movement of the arm. That's the travel distance. So those blades are where all the stress is placed. However, if you get breaks on this piece, you'll get breaks that happen somewhere over here, maybe down here, and or here. Now those will all tell you something. If you do not get a break here, say here or the opposite side, that means that your tension is too high. You have to loosen it. If you do have it very loose and you're still getting in here, that's because you're doing too much flex. You're twisting too much on the blade. See, it bends and flexes, but you can go too much and cause stress and cause it to snap. If it breaks here, that is because it is getting too hot, you're going too fast, causing this place to degrade and snapping because it just gets hot. Let's get a little closer to the piece.
All right, here we are again on our work area. You'll notice a lot of brass powder hanging out in here. This is why you saw me wearing the goggles, and I also wear a respirator while I do this, because I don't want to be breathing this. I did that once. My nose bled. Not a good day. All right. Um, setting this up, these teeth point down, and this is a 20 tooth per inch blade. I had some 15 teeth per inch that I was trying because I didn't have these 20 teeth per inch yet, and I broke about three of those 15 teeth per inch blades, three of them on one cut. So don't do that. If you mismatch your TPI with your project, you'll cause problems such as breaking. All right, so how taut do I make this? Well, let's go over here real quick. Here is my loosen, here is my tighten. So I'm gonna tighten it, so I'm using my fingers. Let's get here. Come on, move pieces. All right, once again, I'm just move using my fingers, and now it's starting to get tight, so I can't do that anymore. I have to apply more pressure. That's it, I'm done. Okay, so with that amount of pressure on here, the rest of the pressure comes from the arm movement up and down. And every time this opens, this pushes air through this nozzle right here. Right there, that nozzle. And that blows air off of your cut area so they can make sure that you're still getting a good cut. All right, one more adjustment. I'm going to pull back a little bit. One more lesson about these blades. Now, I told you they can flex. Um, when you're cutting, as the material is running through this, it's going to start pushing the blade like this. It's probably not focusing on it, but it's going to start pushing like this. Like a piece of string or a bow is going to push this way with the tension up here and down here. And it's going to start causing it to flex. And that's bad. Well, it's good in that uh, if you have it too tight, that's what causes it to snap up here. So you want it to flex because it has to push against the thickness of this brass. So you'll see it flex and push a lot. But while you're doing that, watch the left and right flex because you start pushing on it and then you start pushing on it this way, it'll snap. And then if you start twisting it because you're turning a corner, it'll snap. So it's, it's a delicate process. Here's another thing. You start cutting, this blade will take off with your piece. It will pull it all the way up to this. This is what this sled is for, is to prevent that from happening. But you'll get dancing. You'll get it in here and it'll rise and lower with the arm. You're pressing too hard. Draw back a little bit. Okay, that's enough lessons on there. So we'll get the actual cutting philosophy in just a second while I finish up these three lines right here. So sound warning, this can get kind of grating. I'm gonna put my face mask on real quick. A dirty old face mask. It's on. Okay, that was real time, and now I have to create that same groove that I made right here, right here, so I can turn the blade, because I can't turn it a hard angle without flexing that blade, and I don't want to do that with the arm moving, which is what another thing that causes it to snap. Now, as a warning, I've cut this piece already in another half piece, and these, piece, and these blades have been barely lasting me one cut. So, just to let you know, just to be perfectly honest, 
This is a learning experience and it's a constant learning experience. I'm constantly learning to cut new materials because I could use one blade on wood all day and all night, but now I'm doing metal and it behaves differently. All right, mask on one more time. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start guiding the edge this way. So I'm gonna turn the piece I'm going to start forcing it out of the edge with enough width that I can rotate this piece uh, inside of that little channel here. Because this is metal, I can't just find a new attack angle and just cut it because that'll wear out the blade prematurely and this will help it last longer because I'm not making such a long cut and travel distance. That's about deep enough where I can give it a turn. And that's the whole point. I just want to be able to get it here, have it bite in again, and be able to take off. Um, this affords me a lot more play room, so I don't have to uh, continuously pull in, pull out, and do more cuts. That will potentially sort shorten the life of the blade. Now, when you watch me do this, You'll notice that I have a good angle on it, but I have to get a good bite angle first. And when it's thin, when the channel is thin, it's very easy to get your first notch and draw out a new bite angle. But when that second bite angle came in, it had too much play, and the blade wants to move away from it very easily, which is good, because if it was too tight, that would cause the blade to snap. So that's, what, again, why it's loose. But you have to get it to bite these teeth on the side are staggered. So as I rub my finger across this, I can feel that there are teeth biting that point away from the blade itself. So I have to turn it, wait just a little bit, then it'll start biting, and then slowly push forward until it creates that groove that's wide enough to fit the face of the blade area. And then I just keep working it, keep doing it until it's big enough. Now those bite areas are very small and tiny blade like this. So be patient. Your temptation will be to turn it harder uh, to get it to bite deeper to finish the cut quicker, and that breaks the blade. All right, I have one more turn to do. That should finish this out. So I'm gonna put my mask back on. Now you might have noticed that I didn't make that corner here. There's the piece that was in there. You might notice that I went here, here, all the way around and stopped here. One thing that I mentioned earlier is that this motor is more powerful than you. It will bend this if you try to go all the way around and then continue on. So if you end it here, it's working against, um, it's working less against this, the face of this, and more against the face of this. So you keep that point without distorting it. So 
attack angle same direction as the point is going will save you in the long run. If you go the direction the point is going, what's going to happen is this is going to bite it and pull it down and sink it under here, causing it to bend. I've had that happen to me today, actually, as I got other two pieces bluing right now. So, as I said, it's a learning experience. If that was wood, that wouldn't have bent. It would just would have grabbed it and the strength of the motor against the plate would have just plowed through um, the wood. But this is metal. Metal behaves different. It bends and gets hot in a different way than wood does. All right, I just hit the floor. So I've got to finish this out and might as well do a speed video where you get to watch me do that. So mask on again.
Okay. Ooh, mask off. I get to rest. Ah, oh, that is so strangeful. Holding down on here and then pushing at the same, same time. My shoulders are killing me. And that's and I'm doing this for a while, but. Woo! Add that to the collection. Now you may wonder, how do I get such straight, straight, beautiful lines? In truth, they're not all that straight, and they're not all that beautiful, but they're good enough. Some of them are pretty downright, there you go, downright rugged. But um, a rule of thumb, always push this way. No matter what you're doing, push this way. Even if you're turning, when you turn, always have the blade pushing this way. Never push this way, never push that way, push this way. Sometimes I have to let go of the piece and let it recenter itself where it sits so I can keep pushing this way. That's it. That's all the advice I have for you right now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got another one that's going to actually show off the final products. Someone actually requested that. So I'm going to make a video showing off the final product. So, I mean, why not? That's the fun part, right? <laughs> all right. I'm going to shut this video down. Thanks for watching. And uh, how else can I thank you on Kane's Armory by saying, please come back, subscribe, like, do the thingies. Push the buttons, bells and whistles and doodads and gizmos.